Hi, my name is Eli Davis. Um, I'm going to document this uh, process I went through when building a thing I call a drink machine. Very, very creative name. Um, so that people who set out to try to make the same thing, uh, they don't make the same mistakes I did. Um, because there's a lot of lessons learned in this. So what is this drink machine? Um, I wanted to build a present for one of my friends uh, for Christmas. And uh, we used to drink a lot together, like liquor and all that. So I was thinking it'd be pretty cool if I could build these two machines. He's moved away at this point. And he'd have one, I'd have another. And then we'd have like this little phone app. And then when I press like pour shot, it would d both dispense a shot in my drink machine. And then 200 miles away uh, in his drink machine as well. At, at the same time. So you could like play games together. And... Um, you could just, you know, drink together and all that. You could stay with each other and all that. Um, so I didn't end up by building a second one because when I was starting to look at parts, you know, it duplicates the price. I'm like, I'll do it later. Um, so uh, I had this time limit uh, where me and a friend group were meeting up at the 26th, which was yesterday at the time of the recording. And he he lives four hours away, so it might, it might be more than 200 miles. Um and I needed to get it to him very, like, like I had to finish it before uh, this meetup. So I was kind of pressed for time. I ended up taking around three days. Um, and it didn't turn out how I like it, but it, it works. So the materials uh, I used to build this thing, um, I used two 5-volt peristaltic pumps. These pumps are really cool because uh, it uses a massaging mechanism so it's attached to this motor and this motor just spins and it spins these like three wheels that massages the silicon too and when it massages it and presses up against it it creates a vacuum which pulls um, liquid out from one end and into the other um, this is really nice because it's very minimal cleaning uh, if I want to replace anything I just take out the tube and put in a new one they're super cheap it's like three dollars for a one meter tube um, or maybe even less. Um, the other cool thing is that it's very exact. It's used in medical devices because it's like, very precise. Um, there are issues with it and probably wasn't re uh, necessary for this design. Probably wasn't good. Um, and we'll get into that later. Um, another thing was a, a $10 piece of wood. It was about half a centimeter thick. I went to Lowe's and I bought the cheapest thing I saw um, that I thought would work. I used Raspberry Pi 3. Um, this was overkill for the project because it only needed to run this like tiny little web server um, and then operate GPIO pins. Uh, the only reason I used it is I wanted a hackathon and I haven't used it since and I thought I might, might as well get some use out of it. Um, and so the, the solution was a web server. I didn't even realize I had Bluetooth until I started working with it. It's Raspberry Pi 3 is very nice. Um, but uh, I, if I were to do this again, I'd probably look into alternative, cheaper solutions. Um, and then I used two NPN transistors. Uh, the label was uh, 2N2222, two, 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 four twos, or a 2N and then four twos, um, which I'm pretty sure um, I not using the right piece. Uh, I'll kind of describe it later, but that's what's in the um, build currently. So for the process of constructing this thing, you first start with the design. I used uh, Google SketchUp, or I think it's just SketchUp now. I think Google doesn't own it anymore. Um, <clears throat> it's, if you're unfamiliar, it's a great, easy 3D modeling tool. It's like the Microsoft Paint of 3D modeling. It's super easy. Um, very lightweight. It's like a hundred megabyte download. Um, exports all these different format formats like XBX, FBX, OBJ, um, and it has like ten tools. And with those ten tools, you can build a lot. Um, so that's what I used for designing this thing. Um, I don't work with wood a lot. Um, I'm really not sure if this is great for designing kind of wooden constructions, but it's what I used. Um, so for making the box, I use that uh, really cheap piece of wood um so this is like right before christmas i built this in like three days um and i did everything in the kitchen it was cold outside and i was pissing off my family um i used a little jigsaw my uh dad would 
hold the piece of wood still while I like jigsawed uh, the piece of wood, um, cutting out the pieces. Um, one of the issues with using that SketchUp program, or at least for me, I I did it improper. Um, I mixed inches and centimeters, so um, I would have like I would be like, oh, okay, this is a half centimeter thick, and then uh, later I'd be like, okay, this is 1.1 inches thick, like for the the pump. Um, and then in the end, when everything was coming together and I was starting to take measurements of the design, it'd be like, all right, this piece of wood is going to be six inches and 47 over 64th inch thick, um, or long or whatever. And, uh, it's, I can't make that precise of a cut. Um, so I ended up eyeballing a lot of things and those eyeballs compounded pretty hard and you'll see that this thing did not come out looking straight. Um, I haven't worked in wood in a while and uh, I need some practice for sure. Um, I'm a programmer and so the programming was the easiest part. It only took like a few hours, especially once I had the GPIO pins figured out, all the electronics. So um, the server was in Python. My friend writes a lot of Python in his work, so he's probably most familiar with that. Um, and then the website that the web server hosts is just basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I thought about doing it in React, um, but it's so small. <laughs> like it, in the end, it was a one web page or a one file, just index.html, and it was like a hundred lines. So it totally would have been overkill for anything. So this is sort of what the website looked like. Um, when you pull it up from the Pi, I've already given away the gift at this point to my friend, so I'm just running this on my machine. Um, but yeah, if you restart it, um, you defaults to 50-50 and then 8 ounces, and you set, yeah, I want maybe 5 ounces of a drink. And if uh, pump 2 is vodka and I only want like 2 ounces of my vodka, then I can just drag it over until I get around 2 ounces. Um, and then you just click go, and it pours it, and then you get this message that says it's pouring, but uh, I won't get that because this is just on my machine. I'm not running on the Pi. Um, and then for the wiring, um, yeah, I'm a programmer. I ha I took a class called Micro in my undergrad. Uh, it did some wiring, but it was basically holding your hand. So this was my first um, successful attempt at, at getting things working. Um, I used the two transistors. So you had the, the Raspberry Pi 3 has a 5 volt pin, and these pumps require 5 volts, but the GPIO pins don't give out 5 volts. Um, so it's kind of like you're trying to control a 5 volt flow, flow through um, these pins. Um, and you can do that. And I'm pretty sure I did it wrong. I don't think these transistors are allowing 5 volts through. They might be. I have no way to test it. Um, and the reason I say this is because those those pumps are rated for 100 milliliters uh, per minute. And they're getting like uh, around uh, 100 milliliters every a minute 20 seconds per pump. It's it's pretty sad. Um, it's very slow, and that's part of the problem with the peristaltic pumps. Um, but I I think what I really needed is something called like MOSFETs, and I'm still unfamiliar with, familiar with the whole thing. Um, I've been watching a few videos um, about it. I I think a YouTuber called Great Scott, he covers a lot of these components, which helped me. Um, but I mean, five minute videos aren't gonna be like gonna teach me how to build this thing, so. I need more practice in that. Um, yeah, getting those, getting getting what I needed too was annoying. So it was Christmas Eve, um, and I called up at the time of recording. Radio Shack's pretty closed right now. Like I, I think they went completely out of business, or the head honcho. I'm not sure how that all works. But the only reason this thing was open, um, I found it was about an hour away from my home, and it was because it was like part of a. FedEx or some shipping company. So was the, you walk in the store and you see boxes on one side and like cute little parts on the other, just like like wires or whatever. And I went in and I opened like one of their drawers, hoping I'd see a trans uh, like MOSFETs. It's labeled MOSFETs, and that little MOSFETs like container is empty. So that was worth the drive. So yeah, in the end, um, everything came together. It sort of worked. Uh, the biggest issue, or there's two two issues, is that box um, was hard to construct. Like and then I started gluing everything because I messed up so horribly, and gluing probably made things worse. Um, so errors upon errors, just you know, compounding. 
I'm used to in programming, you like, you write something quick, and then you like refine it, um, and you can't do that <laughs> with this. I can't just, I mean, you can, you can sand down wood, but you can't add it back, right, after you've sanded. That was another annoying thing with the, with about the wood, is, uh, a five, I had a half an inch drill bit, but I needed, uh, one inch holes, and so I had to use a Dremel and, like, sand. It took me two hours to do, like, one piece of the wood, the back bite, the most important part, but, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of time, um, so it pours slow, and that's the issue with these peristaltic pumps. Um, even, even if I did it right, even if I had the whole 100 milliliters per minute, that's very slow, um, and I don't need that precision. So for things to improve, um, I was researching other pumps after this, uh, what other people have done. Um, f disclaimer, my idea is an original. Other people have done this kind of drink machine thing and better. So shame on me for thinking I had an original idea, but, um, I was looking and there is these, uh, air compressed pumps, which might be better for building this type of machine. Um, the issue you, you sacrifice, uh, accuracy for speed of pouring. So I think if I were to do this again, I'd buy four pumps, two air compressed, and then two peristaltic and you'd have the peristaltic and the liquor and then the compressed in your mixers. And so You'd have poured an exact shot, but and then the drink filled to whatever f four seconds of turning on the pump and it running. Um, other things that need to improve is woodworking um, and designing a uh, a construction that allows for error and all that. I started looking to how you can like build more forgiving designs. Um, and then uh, the MOSFETs, for sure, are, are figuring out how to get that wiring correctly so that I'm getting the 100 uh, milliliters a minute. Um, so yeah, um, that's kind of been my design, my whole um, experience with this. Um, if you have any ideas or suggestions, please comment or message me or whatever. Um, thank you for watching. Um, have a good day.